This video is brought to you by Cheap Wine and Philips Street Lighting Department. And it's not an official Philips video, but it is featuring Philips products. Very, very versatile products. Let's just zoom in a bit. First of all, we have a universal LED panel that they can modify to suit loads of different power ratings of streetlights. Then we have the very impressive Zitanium power supplies, which are programmable in situ with your phone. I'll show you that too. But I'll put this out of the way at the moment. I'd love to open this one up, but it's so heavy, I just know it's filled with potting compounds. That's not great for reverse engineering. However, the bit we're interested in initially is the LED panel. And this one, if I tilt it back, you can see the LED positions are all populated. They don't have to all be populated. Um, one thing that's worth mentioning, the fact I had to tilt it back so you could see that. If I tilt it from side to side, you'll see that the yellow LED remains visible, the yellow phosphor. And like that, it's po visible. But as soon as I go beyond about here, it starts disappearing. The reason for that is because LED streetlights, if this is the post here, the lamp post here, they are designed to spread a rectangle of light along the road. And there'll be slight feathering at the edges. And the idea is that all the light gets directed at the road and not onto adjacent buildings. And people often say that street lighting just doesn't look as bright. In reality, the road itself is lit as bright as it was before. But with the LED lighting, it's all directed down. And whereas the old high pressure sodium or low pressure sodium or whatever lights, they used to splash light everywhere. These ones just focus it into a controlled area. Let's take a look at the module. We have two connections, push-in wire connections for LEDs, and we have the NTC thermistor option. Now, it's quite interesting. If I take this off, and it was held on by glue, there are 20 LEDs that were originally run at one amp, and it's three volts per LED, so it was about 60 watts of power. This LED is missing its top. It's the only LED that I couldn't test and get to light up. If I bring in my meter here, and it's... Well, I set it to the diode setting, and I turn it on. There is a set of pads. You can't probe the LEDs directly because the pads are underneath, but there are a set of pads. I don't even know if this is going to show up. Is it going to show up? Is that showing up, that it is lighting? Uh. OK, you're going to have to just believe me here if it's not visible, but that LED is lighting at low current from this meter. However, that one didn't light up, and as I was probing about trying to get a good connection on it, I suddenly realised the lens was missing, was missing. I don't know if that was me uh, taking this off, or if it was just basically a lens that detached and has dropped out since. But it doesn't really matter, because it turns out they can be bridged. Say, for instance, they want to uh, make a street light that is rated three quarters of that power, they might choose just to populate these LEDs up there. If it's half the power, they might just pop choose to populate these LEDs here. And you could theoretically just have two LEDs populated in this if you wanted, just the way it's configured. And if I show you the circuit board, I'll just put that out of the way. If I show you the circuit board, I don't know if it shows, but the LEDs for start, they've got the little resistor pads underneath that are... I'm not sure why they've got the resistor pads. Oh, I know why they've got those resistor pads. It's the bypass. Uh, I was thinking, why would they call them R4? I would call that a link more than anything else. But they could, you can say it's a zero ohm resistor uh, that's used there. But the only two that don't have that are two of the middle ones. And this one is marked... TH1 for the thermistor, it's a 10K thermistor, and this is RTH, and resistor thermistor in series with that, and I think that's for fine-tuning the value of that, so that if panels are designed to run hotter, they can fit into a standard ballast with a, uh, the LED driver with the standard 10K detection, but they can fine-tune it up a bit, so they can actually... Uh, vary the sensitivity of the driver to a panel that's designed to run a bit hotter, just for adjusting the panel relief, depending on the application. But each of the LEDs has this little position, and they can put a resistor across that. If I show you the one that I've knocked the cover off accidentally, I'll, I'll take the blame for this. I think it was probably me. You can see the big square chip under this. Keep in mind, this does run at one amp. And if we outline this... Uh, 
it had the positive connection at one side and there was a little couple of pins come up uh, with the negative connection. I know this because I buffed the top off the nail file. Uh, the red dot here is just because I marked that one as the duff one. So, tell you what we'll do. I will now repair this module by bypassing this LED, by putting a uh, little solder bridge across that position if I can. But to do that, I'm going to have to preheat this because it is a, on a heat sink plate. So I'm going to bring it up to temperature and then put a blob across that. And then we can test it again. But we'll program the power supply. Instead of putting out the one amp to this panel, we can program it to put out 350 milliamps or even 300 milliamps, just to make it run at much lower power. So I shall uh, preheat this now and put that blob on. One moment, please. Okay, I have heated it up on this heated surface, which is now cooling down. I tried just blobbing across those little pads here, but I ended up having to put a little wire link across them. There's not a lot of space. Ideally, I suppose you just use another one of those little uh, resistors that is used to basic link other bits out like the one that links out the thermistor this is the thermistor position more or less in the middle of the circuit board and there's its little resistor there so i've just put a wire link across here now it is time to let this cool down it's quite hot and uh, then reprogram the power supply let's take a look at reprogram the power supply so here's the power supply that I'm going to change the settings on and all you need for this is an Android phone and I shall just take this off camera to unlock it and I shall open up my little street lighting menu and I shall choose the symbol set app which is Multi One Mobile. Multi One Mobile. This is where actually it would be quite useful if the screen was brighter. Uh, do you give me a second a moment. That's better. So to start the process, look for the bit where it shows the little uh, antenna and symbol set on the side, which is there. And this is where it's a bit picky. So configure, and I shall then hold the NFC coil of the phone in the vicinity of that. And if it doesn't detect, I'll just move it in increments until it does detect it. And the first thing that comes up is a warning and says, Improper or unauthorized changes to crucial parameters can result in personal injury or property damage. You could make the LED panels grossly overheat or burn out the LEDs if you changed it. I accept. So, as it starts off, it says it's currently set for 1,040 milliamps. Adjustable light output can actually has that independent setting. It also has specifications that will give you the model number, uh, firmware version, the unique ID code, and other information including... The date and time, which is strangely correct, is it just updated that on the phone? The system on time, which is a staggering 27 seconds, it's just been tested. Uh, system starts 8, This uh, again probably the testing, and then history fault code not available. The history fault code tells you of things like over voltage situations. So I'm going to go back to features, and I'm going to change the adjustable output current. I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to... Take that down to 350 milliamp. Tick box, and then it says configure driver. Okay, where is the driver? Where is the little antenna position? I shall then put it over there. Find the sweet spot, which is... Configuration successful. Uh, and it says configure next driver so you can just load program loads at once. It's back to main menu and just out of interest I shall do this again and just double check that it's gone in correctly. So find that sweet spot. I found this phone is better than uh, the Samsung phone that this uh, Doogee phone, the one with the thermal imaging camera and stuff like that, just as a better, stronger NFC field. So this is now set to 350 milliamp. Okay, good. I shall now wire it up to the panel and we'll power it up and we'll see how things go. One moment, please. And let's test my little fix of that LED and the adjustment of the current. I have put a clamp meter on, a DC clamp meter for the current on the negative here, which uh, it would help if I actually clamped it round the wire. Let's see if we can do that properly. 
and I shall null that out. And I've got Liver Neutral in the black and white here. The Earth is in the pink terminal, which it actually refers to as Equi on the unit, which is Equipotential. That does a few functions. It's for interference suppression circuitry, and it's also for the surge suppression. And also, uh, I think it references the output. I'm not sure to Earth. I'm not sure about that. But it is mainly for, it's not a functional earthing as such. The actual earthing goes on to the case of the light. But anyway, I digress. I've got red and black connected to the panel with the black going through this and I've got the blue and white um, going to the thermistor. So I shall power it on now. And this is where it all gets dazzling. It has ramped up. That LED is out. Uh, and we're showing 335 milliamps. That's close enough. That's good enough for that uh, rating. I should actually, but well, I could put this lens on. Ow, that's kind of worse. It's more dazzly. It's now shooting light off at the side. Quite a lot of light. A nice warm light as well. Okay, I shall unplug that because that's too much. But there we have it. Uh, these universal circuit boards, the point of this is that uh, you can get these covers off with care just by gently lifting them off because they are just patched on by little dabs of glue. And once they're off, and normally in the fixture they're held in by screws, but once they're off, uh, you can bypass specific LEDs if you have faulty ones, and um, you can reprogram the power supply to run at much lower power if you so desire, or higher power for other fixtures, it's just a universal power supply. They do them in different power ratings, this one is rated, um, I'll, I'll hold it up the right way to read it, this one is rated um, for... 186 to 250 volts, so European model. Um, the output setting is rated for a maximum of 75 watts. The V out is 35 to 108 volts DC, and the current out is 300 to 1050 milliamps. But you get other units. Do I have one here? Yes, I do. This one is rated 40 watts. Um, it's rated from 500 to 1050 milliamp, or oh, 300 to 1050 milliamp at 20 to 54 volts DC, so it's designed for small numbers of LEDs. And this one is actually, it feels light enough it's not potted. That's good. It means that perhaps you can take it apart and look inside. It will be hideously complicated. They always are. It's one of the feeling points of modern streetlights. But there we have it. Uh, program by power supply. You can program with your phone. Um, the modules that you can adapt and patch out faulty sections, um, all very interesting stuff if you have one of these and you just basically want to recover it and uh, get it working again. Very interesting. <laughs>